Shalom. All praises due to the Most High if you're watching. I want to continue with the lesson that I was speaking of, the son of perdition and the tribe of Dan being the son of perdition, and how in the last days they have hidden themselves among the Israelite awakening and are teaching doctrines, falsehoods, prolonging the redemption of the 12 tribes of Israel and prolonging the kingdom of the Most High or the day of the Most High, the son of, of perdition having every reason to lie about who the son of perdition is because of perdition. I want to go into further proving that we have a nation of people who are Negro Indians that range from dark to light who are not of the 12 tribes of Israel. And also into proving that it, being the children of the promise has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin because we even have black people who are Negroid, who look like Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, acting as if they're Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, that the kingdom of heaven doesn't pertain to. So it has nothing to do with color. It has everything to do with being the seed of the promise or the children of the promise, being of the 12 tribes or the 12 sons of Jacob. And there was also a 13th son who was not included in this as we can go into Revelation 7, 4 through 8 to get the full understanding that you will not see the tribe of Dan being numbered amongst the 144,000 chosen. Um, for that reason, and other reasons in history, they have much reason to stop what is inevitable, stop, not stop, but prolong. They could never stop the kingdom, but they have been deceived to believe that there is profit in misleading our people. They've been deceived greatly. When it says Satan who deceived the whole world, they've been deceived also. They've been deceived to believe that there is an actual another side of the book that pertains to them, in which I've never seen spoken about. Some of it has to do with the Hebrew language, and some of it just has to do with parables and dark sayings and precept upon precept, also pertaining to numbers. As I've spoken before of a numerology set that leads misleads Dan into thinking other things. For example, um, if you go into Matthew 13, 13, where the Messiah speaks of parables and many of them not being understood by those who they're not meant to be understood by. Those who are meant for the kingdom are going to understand certain parables. And it is a necessity that brothers understand the tribe of Dan in order to understand these parables. And in our day, the tribe of Dan isn't, isn't even being taught properly or right. As I said, it has nothing to do with color because you can have brothers like this in the awakening coming from the tribe of Dan who are Shinecock Indians or different indigenous people who were here before Christopher Columbus who were part of the 10 tribes of Israel spoken of in 2nd Ezra 13. They could, they could be posing as a, a so-called Puerto Rican. They could pose as a Dominican, a Cuban, a Seminole even. So it has everything to do with being a chosen of the seed of promise. It says in, in excuse me, Romans 11, that Israel hath not obtained what it looked for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So if the Danites are not part of that election, they're blinded also. I'm gonna go into proving that there's a, a a numerology code or somewhat of numerologies in the precepts, the numbers in the precepts have, have also been a part of misleading the Danites into believing that there's profit in misleading our people. And, and the way they're misleading our people is extremely subtle. They're just they're they're subtly teaching you doctrines for you to believe that they are your brethren. Well I, I'm I'm gonna pull out the, some precepts that prove exactly what it is that I'm saying. I want to start here in Psalms 55. Psalms 55 and verse number 11. It says, Wickedness in the midst thereof. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. 
but it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quickly, let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. So wickedness is used quite a bit in that little passage that I just uh, read. And as I had previously stated in the video uh, coming from 2 Thessalonians 2, where it speaks of the wicked and the W being uh, capitalized. A lot of this has to do with specifying that these people are a wicked people. And as it says here, it was not an enemy. If it was Esau or any of the other nations of people, you can understand that. You can understand that Esau and all the other nations who have, uh, the Africans that who sold us or the Ishmaelites who sold us, the Arabs, you can understand if it was them misleading our people and, and lying to our people because they have a lot to suffer for. They got a lot to pay for from history. A lot is going to uh, be recompensed upon these people for the, their iniquities of their forefathers. But here it says, if it was an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. And I want you to note that it says magnify himself against me, which also goes into the Thessalonians uh, passage where I spoke of, where it speaks of them exalting themselves. Uh, sitting as God in the house of God, as if he is God. So they have magnified himself against me, then I would have made, then I would have hid myself from him. Then you could actually, you know to depart from Esau and the Ishmaelites. We know to, to hide, you know, to keep our distance away from certain people teaching falsehoods. You know that Esau and the Europeans aren't teaching the true doctrine of the Messiah to us because they're Esau according to the Bible. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. A man my equal being an equivalent son of Jacob. An equivalent son of Jacob being those who walked across the Red Sea with us. Who know the mighty strength and the powerful strength that the world calls God. They, they at one time understood his strength and his power and his might. It says, we took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Specifically telling you that it's somebody in company that we walked in the house with. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. He says, as for me, I will call upon the Most High and the Lord shall save me. Definitely not talking about other nations of people. Another part I want to um, highlight in that is, the, is in this 13th precept where it says, My guide and mine acquaintance. I believe it's Micah 7 where it says, Trust ye not in a, any guide. Don't take any guide's knowledge as truth immediately. Don't even take what I'm telling you as truth. Everything should be studied on your own as each individual Israelite is coming into the knowledge of who he is. And exactly what is required of an Israelite being of such, a man, a man being born into this both blessing and a curse. Being of Israel is both a blessing and a curse. Being brought into the knowledge that you come from these people, you should take it upon yourself to do all the studying for, for yourselves. As I've done myself, I, I went into the tribes and studied all the tribes myself. I went into uh, the history of all my brothers. Which is a wonderful history. These brothers got a wonderful history on here. Like you see a lot of our people uh, whoring after the history of other people. Like you, you have uh, Negroes that love the, the Chinese movie flicks. You know what I mean? They love their history. They love the, the so-called mole bites. You have some of our people who, who they, they love all these other nations of people in history. But I went specifically into each and every one of these tribes and all their histories to understand exactly who my brethren are and who my brethren are not. Especially when we have a, a nation of people among us who are foretold to be a serpent by the way and an adder in the path. That should be complete motivation for a brother to, to, to do all the studying for yourselves. I bear my own burden. I'm going to stand in front of the Most High if I don't make it and have to pay, pay for all my iniquities and all the things that I have been found guilty of. 
So you don't want these brothers laying secret sins upon you, which they're doing, which I, I previously had read in a passage um, <clears throat> where it says here in uh, Psalm 64, Psalm 64 and 4, that they may that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot. They, they secretly are, are, are putting little sinful things. They've added traditions that have transgressed the law very swiftly. Very quick in the awakening have they already started to add traditions, which is something that was done before. We said, why transgress ye the law with your traditions? Your traditions breaking the law. There's many traditions that they're already starting to start building and, and creating that break the laws. Which takes, I mean, I tell brothers all the time, do the study, you got to study for yourself. Don't trust in any brother. Don't even trust me. Don't trust in me saying that we have a nation of people of debt called Dan among us who are Negro Indians lying. Go into the studying for yourself and you're going to see this yourself. As I, as I just guide brothers into certain precepts, you got to do the knowledge on your own. Because there's a very strong manipulation. You can't answer for no other man but yourself. What are you going to stand in front of the Most High and say, well, I, I was following this sect or I was following this brother and he was teaching me that um, this isn't a sin. So I, but you, and you don't want to do that. Lying is a big thing in Israel. Lying is one of the major things that's going to keep many of our people from making it to the kingdom. I can prove that here in Zechariah. They, got, they, they, they keep our people with lies in their mouth. It's coming out the doctrines, coming out of very many things. Right here in um, Zephaniah 3, 3 and 13, it says, The remnant of Israel shall do no iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall the deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So we're not going to be, we're going to be blameless in this law, because we're going to study, I study this law diligently, daily. All the time, I'm studying the law, making sure I'm keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments diligently. I give a thorough study to the law. Before I even came into <clears throat> the knowledge of these um, other nations, this other nation of people called Dan in, our, in the midst of us, I chose to go straight to the law first. I went straight to the law to see what was required of me. Once I understood that I was an Israelite under the covenant of the Most High, I, I wanted to do this wholeheartedly and, and completely understand what is required of me and do it set myself to do it i don't care what it is that i had to change about myself i was going to do that so that's exactly what it is that we're doing not following somebody else which you can be misled in very many different ways by the, listening to other people listening to other sects these danite sects that's what they're doing is they're coming out creating stumbling blocks for our people and as you says it says here in uh zephaniah 3 and 13 the remnant of israel shall do no iniquity nor speak lies Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. So deceit, a deceitful tongue, uh, no iniquity, nor speak lies. I'm going to go back here in Psalms 55. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her street. So we're right in the middle of deceit. We're right in the middle of lies. It says, for it was not an enemy. The enemy is not even the one that's putting these lies and this wickedness in. Well, the enemy, it is an enemy, but it was a, it's a wrongful enemy. Which I'll go into further precepts and proving that these people are a wrongful enemy. Like you have the, the nations of people who are confederate against us mentioned in Psalms 83 who are our enemy. Who have always been our enemy since the days of Saul. Since the days of before Saul. Since before, since coming out of Egypt. But this is a wrongful enemy. These brothers actually walked across the Red Sea with us. They understand the mighty powerful strength. And they still choose to go against that. And go against his people. And do all they can to manipulate our people. Which I said it takes a strong delusion. They, they're under a strong delusion to believe that there's profit in, do in doing such. It takes a strong delusion to get a nation of people who, who actually know the strength of the Most High to speak against the Most High and speak against His people. Because really what they're doing is speaking against Him in many different ways. They're lying and cursing our people in so many different ways, it's unreal. I want to go here to Psalm 62 and 4, where it says, They only consult to cast Him down from His excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. 
So it says they're, they're only speak, they're only consulting with our people, they're only teaching you that you're an Israelite under the covenant to cast you down from our excellency, to, to gain your trust and to believe in that you can follow them into, into this path. This, we're going to teach you the true path because we're the ones that taught you that you're from the 12 tribes of Israel. So why would we teach you anything falsely? But according to the Bible, that they're only, cast, they're only consulting to cast us down, and they delight in lies. As I have pre previously read in Psalms 58, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. So they're bringing their lies into the so-called truth and teaching our people a bunch of lies. And I can go on to, almost into any single doctrine that th that's out there that these people are teaching and I can show and prove lies, a lot of them. <clears throat> it says they bless with their mouth here in verse 4 of Psalm 62, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. I pointed out to a brother that the word Barak, which is bless, also means curse. So a lot of times they're saying Barakatha or Barak, and they're, they're blessing you, but really on the inward side, they're cursing you. These brothers are a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path. That alone, us being in the midst of deceit right there, that should tell you that I'm not trusting nobody. Jeremiah 9 tells you to trust not in any brother. Don't trust me. Don't even, I don't do this to have anybody following me or anyone be, being a leader over anybody. I bring my brother to the equivalent knowledge that I have for the body of the Messiah, for our body, which is the Hebrew Israelites. We are a congregation of people, a nation of people, and we're being taken away from that by a, spe a specific tribe called Dan. They're taking the Hebrew Israelite nation and turning it into religion. You got people saying that, now saying that Hebrew Israelite is a, in a cult. And the reason that people are saying that type, those types of things is because of the Danites creating cults out of Hebrew Israelite, out of the Hebrew Israelite history book. <clears throat> so trust not in no man. Trust not in no brother. Don't even trust me. I, I, I thank the Most High daily for the trust issues that he put in me. I was a wicked man in the streets, and trust was... Something that I didn't know anything about. I didn't trust hardly anyone. I, I, barely, I didn't even trust my mother. So trust is a very big thing in this truth. Only I trust in the Most High in His Word. I trust in, in the righteous path that He's provided me, provided me through this book. Is the true path that's going to lead our people into, um, into redemption. It's going to keep our people from being completely wiped out as very soon there's going to be a lot of affliction coming from all these nations, especially with all the knowledge of all the people uh, of Israel coming into. Our people coming into this knowledge is scaring the world. we scaring the world because the world's going to have to pay for what they did to our people. I want to go further into precepts and proving that they were blotted out of the book. And for what reasons were they blotted out of the book? And why and when. And not only that, the, in the days of the Messiah, they were portraying to be Jews. As in our day, they're portraying to be Israel. That which was is that which shall be, and there is nothing new under the sun. So when the Messiah came and was and called the Pharisees, scribes, hypocrites, called them ye, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, I don't know why you would think that anything other than the tribe of Dan was in the midst right there because why would he come to the Israelite world, to the world of the Jews and call the people who he came for serpents or generation of... He's, he's not going to do... He didn't do that. The Most High's hand is open to the people of Israel. He was calling the serpent by the way and the adder in the path the generation of vipers because that's what they have been. And also, I want to go into, um, I'll, go, I'll also do uh, later videos that go into the numerology that is to see these brothers into believing that the Messiah is actually of the seed of Dan and not of Judah. Which is, it's, it sounds crazy. It sounds like, like just me saying that because you, you probably never heard anyone saying that before. But this is an actual strong delusion that they're under. They're under a very strong delusion, brethren. Here in Psalm 69, 
verse 20. I refer a lot to Psalms because the book of Psalms in, uh, has a lot to do with the Danites. The book of Psalms has so many different parables and so many different sayings that pertain to the tribe of Dan that you can't understand the book of Psalms without understanding the Danites. Right here in verse 20, it says, Reproach hath broken my own heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. It's also, that's where they're feeding our people evil for good. They have you thinking that they're feeding you something good, the good bread of life, but really they're feeding you gall. They're feeding you bitterness. Here in 22, it says, Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. So he's speaking of a trap and a snare in their table, their table being their doctrines or their tablets, their writings. Let their part of this book be a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. I want to precept that with Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28, verse number 13. I'll start here in 12. It says, To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may, may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So precept upon precept also here mentioned twice, once in, in scripture number 10 and also in scripture number 13, but here in 13, it mentions a fall backwardness and broken and snared and taken with using precept upon precept. Psalms 69, verse 23, excuse me, 22. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. So they're putting precept upon precept teaching our people falsehood, but it's a trap to them because they've been deceived through precept upon precept a falsehood, a strong delusion. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. So the people who also are going precept upon precept for a snare and a trap to them, that which should have been good to their welfare, this book should have been for, to, the be to their well-being, has become a trap to them. Like I've said, I said about the um, strong delusion that this book has actually strongly de deceived the Danites. And it says here, let their eyes be darkened that they see not. And make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them and let thy wrath anger, let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten. So we've been smitten by the Most High for our iniquities, for the iniquities of our forefathers. And they persecute that whom he has smitten. They have showed no mercy to our people. After coming out of 400 years, 500 years of, of captivity, oppression, slavery, mental abuse, the constant... Uh, mental captivity that's going on in our people, they've had no mercy on an afflicted people, on the people who the Most High has, as it says here, has smitten. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. The results of that 
those who have been blotted out of the book and not mentioned among the righteous, that alone should tell you exactly who they're talking about right here, the tribe of Dan, and why it is important to understand exactly who the tribe of Dan is, because these people are persecuting us and having no mercy on our people. They've, they've, in history, they've actually <clears throat> done very many things uh, contrary to us, and also, they're in government. They're in the United States government today in higher positions. That's why you can see Negroes like Condoleezza Rice. You can see Negroes like Colin Powell in higher positions here in Babylon, knowing the oppression and stuff and, and the, the affliction that they're doing to the poor people of our nations, the indigenous people, uh, the, the, the real Gadites. That you can. So you can still find Negroes in government. You can't really find indi indigenous people, uh, so-called Native Americans or Indians in, in government. You find very few so-called Mexicans in government. And if they are Mexican, it's more than likely they're Spanish, they're Spaniard or straight cooned out Mexican to the point of no return. But you have Negroes in high positions. I can go so deep into the truth and the true knowledge that I can prove that Obama is from the tribe of Dan and the fact that he has discrepancies in his birth certificate it all stems from the fact that his father was a Negro, an indigenous Negro who was a communist Negro. So I can go deep into proving not only Obama but Martin Luther King. MLK was a Choctaw Indian or a Chickasaw, one of the indigenous peoples from the deep south. As I just was uh, Looking up some of these things here uh, about the Choctaws and the Choctaw tribes and the the, uh, the treaty with the Choctaws and Chickasaws and the um, right here I just look I just googled Treaty of 1866 Choctaw and it says the Choctaw and Chickasaw nations had a single Reconstruction Treaty the Choctaw and Chickasaw Treaty of Washington 1866 in which they sold land west of the 98 longitude to the United States for $300,000. Much of this land was previously leased to the federal government and was the home of other Indian tribes. So you can Google some of these things and it'll, it'll completely pop up that these Choctaw and Chickasaws have been confederate with our people. I even um, set up a website, I set, not a website, excuse me, but a, a Instagram page where I actually post truth about the tribe of Dan. And I posted a quote on here that comes from the book called History of the Choctaw, Chickasaws, and Natchez Indian, 1899, written by Hor Horatio Cushman. And there's a quote that says, Neither the Choctaws nor Chickasaws ever engaged in war against the American people but always stood as their faithful allies. I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't. But I, I post this stuff on, on, on Instagram, but and very few people eat it up. Although I do have a very few Israelite following, as I've said before, I don't really, I don't need validation from no man for real on anything I, I teach. I, or anyone to co-sign stuff. So I really don't try to go add a whole lot of Israelites to the, to my to my social media sites, but I have added a few, and very few have actually grasped a hold of the whole tribe of Dan thing. Um, because a lot of our people are blinded already. A lot of our people are already blinded and conditioned to already believe that they know the truth, even though they don't understand who the tribe of Dan is, and Dan shall judge his people is one of the is one of the tribes. They they can't tell you what that means. They already have been conditioned to believe that they know the truth. There's, like as I said before, those who are meant to get it are going to get it. <clears throat> but also here, I wanted to look, take a look at the uh, fact that the Choctaws owned slaves. Um, this is uh, the treaty with the Choctaw Chickasaws. If you go to Wikipedia, the first thing that you're going to see is an uh, image of Albert Pike, who was their representative. Uh, because they was confederate with the confederate states and the, the completely confederate with the confederate cause they was completely in league with the confederate cause I'm going to go down here where it says the aftermath the aftermath from about 
1918, Mississippi Choctaws were largely ignored by government, governmental, health, and educational services and fell into obscurity. So even after some of their uh, treaties with, the, with, with Esau, Esau still kind of kicked him to the side. You know, he didn't put him into the, into the same state as the, the Native Americans from the tribe of Gad or the so-called Negroes from the slave trade. But he kind of he, he kind of just as it says here they were largely ignored. In the aftermath of the Civil War, their issues were pushed aside in the struggle between defeated Confederates, freedmen, and Union sympathizers. Okay, so in the aftermath of the Civil War, their issues were pushed aside. The Confederacy's loss was also the Choctaw Nation's loss. The Choctaw Nation, in what would be Oklahoma kept slavery until 1866. <clears throat> so in Psalms 50, as I had previously had read, where it says, thou, when thou sawest a thief, thou consentest with him. Slavery and selling Indian land to the white man is most definitely consenting with the thief. Choctaws are black. Choctaw, Chickasaw, I'm going to go into proving that these Today, they even know that they're black people. They even know that they own slaves. I have on Facebook, I have followed a, a, a page to where these brothers know that they have owned slaves. They know that they're, they're, in, they're the indigenous peoples. This is... <clears throat> this is what the Choctaws look like. They're blacks and they own slaves. If you don't believe that they have been set up highly or set up loftily in some, in some places in the scripture, it also speaks of them being rich and having wealth and being of, of status, having a, a wealthy status. And of course, we know that the Most High is the God of the poor. That they actually have benefited from slavery. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to own slaves and not have some kind of financial prosperity from that. We know that America was built on the, the backs of slaves and stolen land. Some of it wasn't stolen. Some were actually stolen by the Choctaws and sold to Esau for cheap, including Manhattan. Manhattan, there's indigenous people coming out of the East Coast um, who sold Long Island for dirt cheap to Esau. These were Negroes. The shiny cock and the Canarsie Indians, the Lenape, these people were black. Powhatans were black. So their habitation is throughout America, and they've also migrated in several areas. Although when you go into the true history of their, of their history of how they moved and how they've been, been moved out of the uh, Deep South, they, some of them actually stayed. Some of them were actually stayed and suffered the afflictions and the oppressions that the so-called Negroes were suffering down there, even though Esau was telling them to move up out of there. Get up out of there, because you're going to feel this. You're going to feel the same thing that the Negroes from the slave trade are, gonna be, are feeling because they're black. They're not going to be able to tell the difference between the Negroes. The Negroes from the slave trade were actually hiding amongst the, the Powhatans and hiding amongst different tribes to where they, had, they was trying to get the Choctaws out of there. It takes, it takes the knowledge of history and the knowledge of your brother to know who you, is not your brother. And who is confederate against you. There's people in high places or so-called leaders of, of sects that they're calling camps that are Choctaw. They set up a lot of people on social media when you come into the awakening to guide our people in the different areas. Like I've seen when I first came into the awakening, I seen a brother on my Instagram who had Choctaw Indian as one of his descriptions and later it come it came and he uh had deleted that but he has the word judah in his name and what a lot of these brothers are doing is as soon as they find out or see that you claiming either choctaw chickasaw calling yourself either dan or something calling yourself dan as i did i set up a danite page they quickly rushed to my page and tried to uh 
to, to guide me somewhere else. Like, yo, it's impossible for you to be dead. You got to be either the Seminoles or you might be Gad or Judah. So they don't really want the knowledge of this coming out. And I mean, I wouldn't either if I was a Choctaw. I've had people on my social media, on, on YouTube, accuse me of being a Danite. But that's, that's impossible. If I was, I mean, the Most High obviously put a spirit on me that probably I was a victim of the Choctaw slavery. My forefathers was probably in servitude and slavery to the Choctaws. So that's why he, he had me come out swinging on these people. Not really swinging, but coming out with the truth. I'm coming out with the truth that these people have actually owned slaves. They actually owned our people and have been completely confederate against us. And that is completely the, the prophecies of how we identify Dan and how we identify who we are and who we are not. The serpent, by the way, is identified by the serpent-like things that they've done and the, the en being an enemy, as I've read in Psalms, a wrongful one. There's many more precepts that I can go into that pertains to the Danites as being hidden. So many. This entire book is, is hidden for real. The real knowledge of this book is hidden. And as I read from Isaiah 28, that what should be for um, what precept upon precept for a trap, they are providing precept upon precept for a trap to our people. So when I say this book has two different meanings, it's not because I'm a double-minded man. I believe in the righteousness of this book and the truth that the 12 tribes of Israel will reign under the Messiah in the Most High's kingdom forever. But they don't believe that. They might say that, but subtly they're teaching you a false doctrine, believing that they inherit the truth. Because to them, precept upon precept for a trap pertains to you of the 12 tribes. They're trapping you into, the, into believing that you know the truth, but you really don't. It goes deep, my brethren. I promise it goes extremely deep. And if, it, it sounds completely crazy if you haven't done the studying. Because you're not going to hear it coming out of people's mouth. You're not going to hear it from out of these big, large organizations calling themselves Hebrew. You're not going to hear that. You're going to hear it from the poor Negro who did this, the studying on his own. That's who you're going to hear it from. The brother that has nothing to lie about. This book pertains to the people that I come from. I'm not going to take anything out of context that isn't meant for it to be like that. I'm not going to lie. Especially if a lie, if lie, speaking lies is going to keep me from the kingdom... Why would I speak lies to my brothers? Who I'm trying to uplift my brothers into teaching that we have a lot of manipulation and that each and every single individual Israelite needs to go into this book and study for themselves. Stop trusting in these people. I want to go into uh, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse number 45. Deuteronomy 28, 45, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So all these curses are the sign for our people and a wonder upon thy seed forever. So it's by these afflictions that we know exactly who we are. It's not by color. It's not by location. It's not by you going into history and just saying, my father told me when I was a Hebrew. It's the, the curses that are a sign, that are for a sign and for a wonder. So if your people have never suffered the curses of this book, then these curses cannot be a sign for you. If you go into the Choctaw and Chickasaw treaties, all of the provisions of the treaties are contrary to the curses. They've kept their lands, they've kept their governments, they've kept certain things intact over in, in their territories of Oklahoma. And never suffered the curses. So how could it be possible that these curses be assigned to your people if are, you've never suffered them? It can't be. And that's exactly how we know who the Danites are and who, they, and who the 12 tribes of Israel are. The Danites didn't suffer those curses. The Caribbean Negro, the West Indian, so, excuse the West, uh, uh, the West Indies, 
the Negro from the slave trade who was taken to the West Indies knows that he was brought there from the western coast of Africa or throughout Africa or throughout uh, Europe. You know, we've been taken, stolen from many different places. So they know that they've suffered affliction in their past. They know that they're oppressed and that their forefathers were slaves. But if you're a Carib Indian who was there and never suffered these things, which there are, St. Lucia and into the Trinidad area, as I said, I've done extensive studying into some of these indigenous people and their locations. The, it's impossible for those Caribbeans to be the Benjamites or for those Caribbeans to be of the 12 tribes when they've never suffered certain afflictions. <clears throat> I want to go back also into because there's so many different places where I could go with, into proving that the Danites are among us. Psalms 140. <clears throat> Psalms 140 and 1. It says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. So these people really have a and when you go into the understanding of the Danites, there are violent people. Verse 2, which imagine mis mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Salah. <clears throat> Now that goes into the root words that I was speaking of, of how you can exactly understand certain precepts and they know exactly who they're talking about because of certain root words that will direct you into the understanding of exactly who's being spoken of here in the precept. It says they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Salah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Goes that wicked again. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed, excuse me, who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hit a snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Salah. So they set in lots of traps. They set in, they, they sharpen their, port, their tongues like a serpent. Their tongues are sharp. What they're teaching, they're, they're very good at what they're doing. Because I, I went into, the, uh, into some videos of, of the IUIC. The man, the leader of that sect is pretty good at what he does. He's pretty good at, sharp, at, at having a sharp serpent tongue. He is actually cursing our people while people believe that his, he is a righteous man teaching our people the truth. There are so many gins and snares that they have set up among our people that it's, it's, it's unreal. You go into, uh, it continue, you can continue all the way into Psalms 142, verse 3, where it says, When my spirit was overrun within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privately laid a snare for me. So you can see snares and traps being laid for our people continually throughout the book of Psalms. And by whom? By whom? Not coming out saying specifically the Danites are laying snares and traps. But by root words in which serpent and adder and, and the wayside and path by the way. Those things should completely direct you into the understanding that they're speaking about the nation of people called Dan. Further, I want to go into Psalms 109. Also, when I, I, I spoke of earlier on, uh, well, before on social media, that Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples who committed suicide, was a parable. It was a real man, a real betrayer, but also was an allegory. An allegory that pertained to the tribe of Dan. 
Judas Iscariot in itself, the, the name contains 13 letters. There's very many different things such as that type of, that type of direction that leads you to understand that the Danites are very much alive and very much betrayers and manipulators in our truth. So the 12th disciple, who was a devil, as the Messiah had called him, he said, did I not choose you 12 and one of you are a devil? There are black devils in our awakening. They are the devil that the Bible speaks of. The devil isn't just white people. The devil isn't just Esau, the deceiver, who deceived us with the, their Shezra Borgia fake beast image. But we have a deceiver among our people who are violent, so violent that they murdered, they sent our, our Messiah up to be killed for nothing. <clears throat> I want to pause here, brethren, and continue this lesson on the tribe of Dan here soon. I'm not going to keep brothers waiting. You know, I, I know I promised brothers videos before and it took a little while because I, I was studying this thing. I was studying a lot in understanding exactly who these people are and studying exactly who the tribe of Dan is and the son of perdition, which each, each individual Israelite should do among, within himself. So all praise is due to the Most High if you're watching.